Hello everyone, my name is Yuri Gregor Mal Ferreira. I'm a software engineer at Red Hat. And today I'll be presenting Castellite on Barrel Metal Meet There on Prometheus Exporter. What we will discuss today a new product is born, workflow, configuration, demo, adventures and limitations, IPA future, useful links, and questions and answers. A new project is born. Our use case is focused on hardware monitoring. This is because it doesn't matter the size of your infrastructure, the, you need to be aware of the health of your physical nodes. For example, if you have higher temperature in the processor of different physical nodes, you can have some unexpected shutdown and of course you don't want this to happen your infrastructure and if it's small okay you can just go to your data center and find the machine and turn it turn on again and figure out why it was happening but when you start to have a lot of nodes you don't want to be wasting time uh, trying to figure out which machine had a problem why it stopped working you want to be monitoring every physical node that you have available, either temperature, power consumption, memory, voltage, and, and maybe other type of resources of these physical nodes. Going back a bit on, on time, in the journal release, Ironic introduced the sensor data collection, and the goal was to be able to provide IPMI data so it would go to Sailometer and you would be able to use the data for alarms or to trigger some actions in your infrastructure so the operator would be able to know what to do since it would have all the information in the Sailometer. You could have some interface with Grafana, for example, showing the metrics for temperature and speed voltage so you can keep an eye and see if something is wrong you can just take action and don't waste time because time is money the Prometheus the advantages to choose Prometheus is related to the data model that it provides that it's focused on time series each metric you have will have a steam of data that would have a value and a timestamp related to that so each metric you have the information over time and you can create different alerts or either have some integration with Grafana that we will be showing the metrics there and something that is also interesting is that the collection that Prometheus does is via pool model. So you need to just provide an endpoint where Prometheus will be scrapping all the data that will be there. Doesn't matter if it's empty or if you have data, if you don't have anything, it will just be an empty request with get basically. So the metrics that Prometheus provide, normally it's called Prometheus text format, and this format was also standardized by the Open Metrics project that is initiation that will provide a standardized pattern that can be used by different tools for monitoring, basically. The format that Prometheus provide, it's you have the first line, with help, the metric name and the description. Then you have the type, metric name and the type of it. And after this, you will have one entry in each line that will represent a different metric. So the metric is identified by the metric name and a optional set of labels where you have key and value, and then you have a value that was collected when you're monitoring your system. So, for example, you can have the 
temperature of your processor. And if you have more than one processor in the machine, you have probably one sensor in each that we're providing the temperature of it. So you would have two entry and one of the labels would be the sensor ID that it's providing the information about the temperature. IPA, it's the Iron Prometheus exporter. It was introduced during the OpenStack train release. So how does it work? How magically we can just get the data and have it available on Prometheus? What is the whole workflow that we expect to be happening? This is how normally your infrastructure would look like. Just minimal example, okay. You would have a controller node where you have Ironic services running, Ironic API, Ironic conductor, and Ironic Spectre, for example. And also you would have the Ironic Prometheus exporter application there. We have the Flask application that will be used by Prometheus to collect all the data. And then you have your data center with a lot of Frisco nodes and Ironic is managing all the data center, okay? So the first thing that happens is that Iron Conductor will spawn tasks for each node to collect the sensor data. When it's done, the data is sent back to Ironic Conductor. And then when you have the data in the conductor, the, we have a Oslo notifier driver for the Iron Prometheus exporter that is in the Iron configuration. So the Ironic Prometheus exporter driver will handle all the information that is sent to it and it, it will parse all the sensor data to the Prometheus format and we, it will store the data in the disk of the controller. And step four, Prometheus will pull the, the metrics doing request to the Flask application that we have of the Iron Prometheus exporter. You also need to know that the step one, two, and three, basically, they are independent of the step four, is not something that it's synchronous. So you have the whole cycle of the Ironics requesting the sensor data, gathering the sensor data, and sending to the Iron Prometheus exporter so it will filter all the data and create the file with the metrics for each node. And then you have Prometheus running in a different place and requesting data for each 15 seconds, 10 seconds. It will depend on your configuration. So it's not something that it's different. The configuration of the Iron Prometheus exporter. We have two sections that you need to configure to have the Iron Prometheus exporter working. First of all, it's the conductor section. So you need to set the send sensor data to true, otherwise you won't be able to have any data. And you need to have the send sensor data interval. By default, it's 600 sec seconds. So 10 minutes, you will need to be waiting to get more metrics from each node. Be aware that if you use a very low value, you may cause problems for the BMC because I don't think we'll be doing requests very often. So this is not good. And there is also one optional configuration that you can set. It's send sensor data for unemployed nodes. By default, it's false. So if you only have a node that it's enrolling ironic and you want to get information about it, you can just set this to true and you will be collecting metrics from all the nodes. It doesn't have to be in the active state. The second part is the Oslo messaging notification section. You need to set the driver for Prometheus exporter and transport your L4 fake. And that is a required parameter that it's called location. This location that you will provide 
it will be the directory where you are going to be storing all the data you have of the nodes that Ironic has available, okay? So, here we will have a demo. I will just first explain how is my setup for this demo. Basically, I had a machine where I've installed Ironic in the Ironic Prometheus exporter using Bifrost. And then I have two different machines to be used as Ironic nodes, uh, Dell Power Edge R640, and I'm using the IPMI driver for in this one, and the HPA ProLiant DL380 Gen 10, I'm using with Redfish. And I have a Prometheus server and alert manager running on my notebook as containers. And let's start the demo. So here I'm, I can show you that we have Iron Console in this machine. We have the Iron KPI, Iron Conductor, Inspector, and the Prometheus Exporter. By default, the exporter runs on port 9608. Here I can show that I have two nodes available. The first one, as I've explained, the R640. It's a Dell machine. It's power on and already active. And the second one, an HP DR308, that it's in enroll, but it's power on. So that means if I didn't have the on deploy nodes, I wouldn't be collecting data for this machine. Now I'm, I can show you that I'm using the IPMI driver for the, the machine and some other information that we have about it. And if we look at the HP machine, we will see that it's using Redfish. Second, we will check the iron configuration to see if everything is okay. So as I've explained before, first we go to the conductor section. And you can see that we have send sensor data, send sensor data for unemployed nodes, both are true. And the data interval I've set for 90 seconds only because this is a demo, but you shouldn't do this in production basically. And then we can go for the Oslo section. I made a typo, sorry. <laughs> and you can see that we are using the driver Prometheus exporter and transport your L fake. And you have the location we are using Parlib Iron Prometheus Exporter data. So let's see what we have in this directory already. We can see that we have two files, one for each node that we have in Ironic. In this part, I'm showing the number of lines. The HP has 93 lines and the Dell has 158. The reason for this is because the metrics that you have available will depend on the machine you have, so the hardware vendor and also the driver you are using on it. So I can just check how it looks like, the data for one of the machines. And as you can see, you have the help, the name of the metric, and a little bit of the description. And then you have type, name of the metric, and the type of it. 
And as I've explained before, the our metric is identified by the metric name and the set of labels. So if one of them is different, you will have uh, more than one entry. So you have the temp one and temp two for the sensor. So you have uh, the metrics for temperature of each processor, basically. Now I'm going to show that I have in my machine the containers for the Prometheus server and alert manager. So as you can see, I have two containers running. The alert manager is in on port 90 and 93 and Prometheus server 9090. If we go for the interface of Prometheus, you can create different graphs, graphs for each metric you have. And here I'm showing the barometer fan RPM. So you have an idea of the speed of each fan that you have in your machine. And you can just hover by the lines and you see the value and all information with the labels about the metric. So you can understand what it represents. You can also just select a few lines if you are interested interested in different sensors just to compare them, not see everything at once. And you can just go adding different graphs. This one, I have the barometer power status that will indicate if the power supply of a machine is okay or if there is some failure. Zero indicates that it's okay and doesn't, you can see that much, but the lower part has two lines and the top one has also two lines because you have two sensors in each machine and they represent the power supply. So you have a machine that is showing there is a failure in the power supply. So we had an alert for that and I'm going to show you the alert now. So if we click in the alert tab in the Prometheus server, we can see power supply failure, two active. The reason for two is because you have two sensors that are providing metrics that have triggered the alert. And you have some description and summary. If we go to the alert manager, you will see that we have two alerts. And if we click in the information button, we can see a better message description. The health status of the power supply for the bare metal DL380 indicates a failure. We can also add more information. This is customizable because you can just define how the message will look like. I could just add, for example, the sensor ID to make it look better when the operator is reading. And you can also try to set up to receive an email. You don't have to be always using the interface to see what's going on. Here I'm going to show the configuration of Prometheus, what it looks like. This is normally the configuration of the container. In the last part, you need to add the job name and provide the information where, for example, a script interval that how much time it will take for you to do the request again for that endpoint timeout. Uh, you need to have the endpoint for the metrics, so it's a slash metrics normally. And you need to provide the address and the port where Prometheus will be getting this information. So going back to our question, now let's talk a, a little bit about the advantages and limitations that we have for the Iron Prometheus exporter. I can tell that it's 
as an advantage, it's very easy to install and configure. As you can see, you don't have that much of information that you need to provide, basically. It's vendor agnostic, so doesn't matter if you have HP machine, the machine, Fujitsu, Micro, you can use any type of hardware, basically. The data collection is not intrusive. You don't have to install something in the in the physical node to be providing the information that you need. Of course, it will depend on the information that you can get from the BMC, basically. So there is a limitation of the number of metrics that you have. And there is, of course, the integration with Prometheus and Prometheus also provides some integration with Grafana and many other tools that you can use. As a limitation, so far we have only tested or with machines using the IPMI and Redfish driver. Uh, we just need to do some research when using iDrag, ILO, or any other type of hardware that is supporting Ironic to see what metrics we can collect, and then we just need to update in the Prometheus exporter. Contributions are always welcome. So far, we only provide support for Gaussian metrics. And this means that, for example, you can't have a histogram. Sometimes you can have metrics that will look like a histogram, so you can't create that in the IPA, basically. And as I've shown before, the set of metrics, it will depend on the hardware type. So if you have, for example, the IPMI with Dell, we have that number of metrics. But if I was using, for example, HP with IPMI, the number of metrics may be different. And same goes if you are using Redfish with Dell or HP and so on. It's also possible to use virtualization, but only with Redfish. IPMI doesn't support virtualization if you want to collect metrics. So let's talk about the feature of the IP. What can we expect? As I said, support for more drivers, we will try to get some machines and do some investigations, but if you have some machine that you want to test out and see how it looks like the sensor data that you can get off the machine, and we can just create a new parser in there and Prometheus exporter to have the metrics available so you can use in your data center. Metric enhancement for Redfish. So far, Redfish only has support for temperature, fan, some status of both of the power supply. So it's not that much, but we will try to improve that. We are planning to add support for introspection data. You may be thinking, Okay, but normally I only do introspection once in the machine. Yeah, in this case, it's not interesting, but there are some cases there are people that want to be introspecting the hardware from time to time. So it would be interesting to have this information and maybe see if there are value in parsing the data and having some metrics about it. And also we plan on adding some support to generate the alarm definitions that you can pass to Prometheus. Some useful links. We have the, the upstream documentation that for me, it's in a good shape. So if you have any problem when trying to use, just go to the IRC and talk to us. Prometheus Bifrost now has support to install the Iron Prometheus exporter, so it's very useful if you just want to give it a try. Uh, the Metal Tree, they have the Iron Prometheus exporter and the containers are already running, and some people already use that. And here we can go for some question and answers. 
Thank you very much for your time. If you want to get in touch with us, uh, come chat with us on Freenode on OpenStack Iron channel. My nick is Yuri Gregory, or just feel free to send an email to the OpenStack Discuss and with their own tag in the subject. Thank you.